Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. Yesterday, we started a new subject called Pride and Humility. If you missed yesterday's program, I encourage you to go to my website, to the radio broadcast archives, and listen to it. It was the foundation and introduction for a new subject of study. And I won't go into everything again that I said yesterday. But I will say that this is a sequel to the study we did about a month ago called Growing Up Spiritually. And that study we did on growing up spiritually, I defined for you three basic stages of spiritual growth and maturity. The baby stage, the child youth stage, which is the development training teaching stage, and the adult stage of maturity. And then I have mentioned to you that in spiritual growth and maturity, for one thing, most people think they're more mature than they really are. And so I heard one teacher say that whatever stage or level you think you are, back it up one, lower it one. You are probably not as mature as you really think you are. Now, you know, that's an on an individual basis. I wouldn't say that is straight across the board, but it is generally true. And now I also said that there are two primary characteristics of the sinful nature or what is also called the flesh nature. Those two primary characteristics are pride and selfishness. They are related. They're very similar, but they are still different. Pride is self-exaltation. And selfishness is putting self first. Making yourself a priority. Making yourself the priority. Now those are related. And those really define and are the root Of all sin. I mean, whether you talk about murder, stealing, lying, cheating, adultery, fornication, all of those are going to come out of pride and selfishness, exalting yourself and putting yourself as priority. And so by crucifying those, that's actually how we crucify sin in our lives. And yesterday I began defining for you what is humility and what is pride. And the root meaning of humility is low to lower to lay low. To low low to lower to lay low to make lowly in mind to reduce arrogance and self-dependence. To make, to crucify the flesh and to make meek and submissive to God's will. To God, to God's will and to God's word. And then what is the root meaning of pride? It means high. High. And it means to raise up and to exalt. Self. Not exalting necessarily others, but to exalt self just like humility is not putting down others it's lowering yourself humility is lowering self pride is exalting self and so it means high high high-minded and overestimation of yourself synonyms are arrogance and haughtiness And then this last definition means to envelop with smoke, to envelop with smoke. And this is where I ended the program yesterday. As I shared with you a story that I read in a book about 25 years ago, a Christian novel that was an allegory. And it showed the picture in an allegory of a Christian life. And it showed a mountain. The mountain represents 
the kingdom of God. And this man, Christian, this man came to the mountain. The first level, the base of the mountain is the level of salvation. You come to the, into the kingdom of God, you are born again and you get saved. And then after he reached the base of the mountain, he was saved. He began climbing the mountain. Each level up the mountain represented spiritual growth. And he climbed the mountain to the top. At the top of the mountain, he entered into the glory of God. He also talked to the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus appeared to him. And then after he spent this time with the Lord, then the Lord told him, you need to go back into the battle. And so by this time he has his armor on. He is trained. He is skilled with the armor. And his armor is shining brilliantly because he's been in the glory of God. And so he starts descending the mountain. And it's just to re-enter the battle, spiritual battle against the enemy. Out on the plain was the enemy camp. And as he's coming down the mountain, now he's very skillful in his shots at the arrows fighting against the enemy. He's very skillful and he's and the other Christians that are there like him. They are very skillful and they are really making good headway and advance against the enemy to the point where they think they've almost got this battle cinched. This battle is almost over. There's just a little bit of that enemy left on the plane. Let's just march right down there and wipe them out. Let's get this thing over with. But with this Christian man beside him was the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is coaching him, teaching him all along the way. And as he says to the Holy Spirit, let's just finish this. Let's go march out there and wipe them out. The Holy Spirit says, no, stop, not yet. And then the Holy Spirit pointed in the opposite direction off the mountain on the plain in the other direction. It was dark over there. It couldn't be seen very well. And the Christian man, his armor is shining bright with the glory. And he looks and the Holy Spirit says, look over there. And he looks and he can't see anything because it's dark and his armor is bright. And so he wisely said to the Holy Spirit, give me something to cover my armor. The Holy Spirit gave him a garment that looked, and in my words, like a poor man's garment, very, very um, ugly, unattractive. And he was almost embarrassed to put it on. But because the Holy Spirit gave it to him, he put it on. And once his armor was covered, he could see into that darkness. And he was greatly surprised at what he saw. There was a huge enemy camp, a huge enemy horde waiting secretly in hiding in ambush to a, to ambush anybody that stepped off the mountain. And he asked the Holy spirit, what is that? And the Holy spirit said, that is pride. And then the Holy spirit said, and that garment I gave you, that is the garment of humility. And only when you put on the garment of humility, can you see pride? And then as he stood there on the mountain, he began seeing some of the other Christians thinking as he had thought that we should just march down there on the plane and wipe out the rest of this enemy camp here that we see. And Yet they were marching off the mountain. They were marching down on the plane. And he's saying, oh, we have to stop them. We have to warn them. They can't see that enemy waiting to ambush them. 
And the Holy Spirit said, it's too late. There's nothing you can do now. You must just watch. So he stood there watching. And sure enough, as soon as these that had marched off the mountain down to fight against the last enemy that they thought was on the plane, the big enemy camp that was waiting in the darkness to ambush came out against them came up behind them and ambushed them and took them captive. They were taken captive by the enemy. However, as the Christian man continued to watch, he recognized something very strange. He recognized that those Christians that were out there that were taken captive did not know they were taken captive. They didn't know they were taken captive. They thought they were victorious. They thought they were marching in the Lord's army. They did not even see the chains that were on them. They did not even see that they were now in bondage to this big enemy horde. They thought they were victorious. And that's what the Holy Spirit said to him. When you're in pride, you don't know it. You don't know it. That's why pride is actually the deadliest enemy. Pride is the deadliest. Because when you're in pride, you don't know it. Pride deceives you. You think you're humble. You think you're doing right. And all the time you are so wrapped up in pride. That is what makes pride the deadliest. Therefore, we must learn to recognize and see pride. And in order to do that, we must pursue humility. Moment by moment. As I've said before, Pride is not something that you can defeat once and for all, forever it's gone out of you. No, unfortunately, as long as we live in the body, we have to deal with the flesh nature. We have to crucify it moment by moment. However, by the more practice we do, we make, we can become more proficient. As we explained, those that are going into the military go through boot camp. They go through training that is rigorous discipline. And those who are going into the Olympics, they go through training that is also a rigorous discipline. And by a rigorous discipline, you can train your flesh to submit, to obey, to yield, and to be humble. Yes. So by a diligent pursuit of humility and practice, you can grow and develop in it and become more and more humble. But it is not something that will ever be automatic. And so therefore, as I said before, most Christians think they're more mature than they are. Most Christians also think they're more humble than they are. Most Christians will say, yeah, I'm pretty humble. Yeah, I'm pretty or I'm basically humble. What's basically? It's nothing. You have a lot more stinking ugly pride than you think you do. Ouch. Let me say that again. Yes, you, you, you have a lot, a lot, a lot more stinking ugly pride than you think you do because most Christians don't know what pride actually looks like. And that's why we're studying this lesson. And as I've said, I don't think I've ever heard, but one in my entire lifetime detailed teaching about pride. And it was the foundation for this lesson that I'm giving you. And as I have incorporated this into my own 
teaching and curriculum, the Lord adds to it and it grows. But I heard only one teacher go into a series of sermons about pride. And that was something that I, that I heard 20 years ago. And I said, Oh, we need this. We need this. And I incorporated it into my teaching. But unless you learn what pride is and specifically what it looks like, how it acts, the signs and characteristics of pride, you will not know that you're in pride when you're in pride. And you will think that you're humble when you are actually very proud. Now, one of the things is that because of the nature of pride, pride can look like humility if you don't know what to look for. That's why you think you're humble when actually you're proud and you've got a lot of pride. Yes, you. I mean you. You've got a lot of it that you need to get rid of. Stinking, ugly pride. And so we need to learn to recognize it. So let's go on. Let me mention to you something about humility. Uh, What is true humility? Well, let's look at what humility is not. Because there is something that the Bible calls false humility. And actually, this is something that a lot of Christians have. A lot of Christians, and you included, have a false humility by not really understanding humility. You think you're humble, but you're not. And first of all, let me read you two scriptures that mention false humility. In Colossians chapter 2, Colossians chapter 2, verse 18. Do not let anyone who delights in false humility. Delights in false humility. And the worship of angels, which is not something we do very much, disqualify you for the prize. So do not let false humility disqualify you. There is a false humility. And if you've got it, it can disqualify you. And then it's just five verses later. It mentions this false humility again. Colossians 2, 23. That last one was Colossians 2, 18. And then the next one is Colossians 2, 23. Such regulations indeed have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, their false humility, and their harsh treatment of the body. But they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. So bottom line is, there are things that have an appearance of wisdom With false humility, but it lacks value. So right there we see two scriptures mentioning there is a false humility. And unfortunately, that's really what religion, um, let me say, um, religious traditions that are really not scriptural, but they are what we think is right, what we think we should do. A lot of that has to do with false humility. Now, what is, what are some types of false humility? Now, the word humility means to lower, to lower. But there is a false humility Humility is not talking bad about yourself. It is not talking bad about yourself. It is not 
degrading yourself. It is not putting yourself down. Now, traditionally, a lot of Christians think that when they put themselves down, they are being humble. I am just no good. I didn't do any good. I don't know much. I'm just dumb. And they put themselves down and they think they're being humble. It is a deception. That is deception. Because talking bad about yourself, putting yourself down, degrading yourself, those are all forms of false humility. False humility. And Therefore, we need to learn to distinguish true humility from false humility. When you hear somebody putting themselves down, degrading themselves, then you need to say, stop that. That is not right. And what is the truth? Let me say it like this. Humility is acknowledging the truth. The truth is that in yourself, you can do nothing but in Christ God has made you righteous. God has called you beloved. God has called you beautiful. God has called you anointed. And therefore, it's really, you you even cannot judge another person, whether they're in pride or humility, Because one can say something out of arrogance and another person can say the very same thing, but with a different heart and motive and they are in humility. For example, don't get confused, but let me say something, for example, like this. I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful. Now, I bet that probably most people, Christians and non-Christians both, that if they were to hear me or anybody else say, I'm beautiful, they would immediately relate that to pride. And they would say, oh, that's pride. That person is so proud calling themselves beautiful. Well, maybe and maybe not. It all depends on the heart motive. If I'm calling myself beautiful, sticking my nose up in the air when I'm looking in the mirror and I'm going, oh, I am so beautiful. I am just the hottest thing. Yeah, that's probably pride. But if I say that based on my faith in God's word and receiving what God said about me, Where he said, for example, in Psalm 139, I'm beautifully, fearfully, and wonderfully made. Then I am receiving what God says about me by faith. And I am acknowledging what God said. Then that is humility. So the same words, I'm beautiful, could be from a heart of pride, If they are taking it as for themselves and crediting themselves and just think I'm some hot stuff. Or it could be taken completely from an attitude of humility, acknowledging God and what God says about me. And you see, that is the difference between pride and humility, it all has to do with how you acknowledge God in that. How do you acknowledge God? Did you acknowledge him or did you not acknowledge him? If you give him the credit and you believe what he has said about you, then that is humility. But if you are not giving him the credit and if you are not believing what he said, because even the very denial of being beautiful, once you have heard 
the word of God that says you are beautiful, fearful, wonderfully made in his image. And if you were to deny that, the denial is pride. The denial of truth is pride. And what is truth? God's word. Jesus said in John 17, thy word is truth. God's word is truth. So anytime you deny the word of God and what it says about you, you are actually in pride. It is pride to deny the truth. And so humility is acknowledging truth. God's word is truth. So there are Christians who think they're being humble by degrading themselves, by calling themselves stupid, calling themselves no good. Even I am so unworthy. I am just a worm. If you say that after you have been born again and you've been made the righteousness of God in Christ, then you are in pride. You think you're being humble. You are thinking you're humbling yourself by calling yourself unworthy. And yet the truth is you are made worthy by the blood of Jesus through faith. And by denying the truth, you are in pride. Well, I'm out of time. We'll pick this up again tomorrow. Join me and remember God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.